This time on Rad Rat Video, we talk about how I would design a video game with infinite money, technology, and all that. Cost being no factor, what would I like to play? Let's talk about it. Welcome back to Rad Rat Video, a channel about skateboarding and skateboarding video games. I'm going to answer some of your questions that were submitted through my website, radratvideo.com. You could submit your own on there. First one is from Julian, who said, the intros for the EA Skate series have always been very fun to watch, and I started to wonder, do you think that EA Skate should get a movie adaptation? Why or why not? I definitely think not. Um, if you want an example of why, watch my review of Street Dreams, which is a movie made by Rob Deerdeck and P-Rod. Um, forget who else was in there. But um, yeah, it's, it's not good uh, because they used actual skaters to do the acting, which is a really cool idea because you can see them talking and then with no cut, he just goes and does a trick. And you can never do that with actors who are only actors and don't skate and then stunt doubles. Uh, it's a it's a problem that I don't think you could really solve. And, and the reason why the skate intros are good, um, I just watched one because I've started my series on skate with reversed controls where I'm flip the sticks around and some of the other buttons too and it's really hard. I just watched the intro on that and it's good, but it's more, it's good. So what happens in it, if you haven't played the game in a while is you, your character is skating, you get hit by a, a truck, you get picked up by the, the, the ambulance and they're driving around and the ambulance drivers are pro skaters and they drive by whoever and almost hit this other car and it's some other pro skater who looks at them and then they stop for donuts on the way and the guy who's selling them is another pro skater and they all look at the camera and you know, like that type of stuff. There's no story. There's no, there's nothing. It's just you getting taken to the hospital and then the Gons has to like do a bunch of um, surgery on you and patch you up. That's what the intro is. There's very little talking. There is some, but it's not a story. No one's trying to convey any emotion. It's, it's funny. And that's about it. Uh, trying to stretch that out to a movie would be ridiculous. I don't think you could possibly do that. And I don't really want to see pro skaters try to act. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't think that's a great idea. Now, if you could do it as an animated movie, if there was like a Pixar skateboarding film, that could be good because you wouldn't have the problem of actors not being able to skate and skaters not being able to act. You could have, you know, like actual, you know, f have skaters and put them on the, the motion capture suits and all that kind of, kind of stuff. And then have professional voice actors voice them, right? You could do that. Um, but if they did, it would be a cartoon. So you couldn't do like a realistic EA skate kind of storyline. You would have to get more cartoony and silly and draw kids in because it's cartoon. That could be interesting though. I don't hate that idea. Okay. Next question is from Sonny or Sony. Uh, thanks for all the great skateboarding content. After recently watching Thrasher's King of the Road, I started to wonder what if all the YouTube skaters fo formed a King of the Road team? Would they have a chance against the big name pros? And if you were invited, would you join? Thanks. Um, I would not join because uh, I wouldn't be able to do anything that would help an actual king of the road competition. I've seen those. They're a lot of fun to watch, um, but I don't think I would really have much to contribute to a team. Could YouTubers beat pro skaters? I don't think so. There are of quite a few good YouTube pros, uh, or just skateboarders who have channels, you know? Um, but a lot of the challenges would be really tough. Like there was one, the one that I I'm thinking of right now, there was the highest slappy, which was really an interesting, you just like do the highest slappy you can. So most people tried to find like a big curb and slappy on it. And then someone, I forget who this was a while back found like a, a ledge that was probably knee high or higher and just like slid up it and kind of like slid his nose up it as he went and then got into a nose slide. So he didn't ollie, but he like just forced his board up it and got into the grind. Crazy. Like, I don't think like most YouTubers aren't at a pro level where you can just whip out a bunch of this stuff, you know, like the cheap, you know, there's all like, you know, do these flat ground tricks. Those are all a couple of points and then go find this pro and skate this rail. That type of stuff is, you know, higher points. Yeah, I just I don't think that they could compete. But 
it made me think of a story. So I used to be a member of a forum called Skaters Cafe, and they did a King of the Cafe, which was kind of the same thing. So you would all come up with groups, and each group, um, you know, you get the same types of challenges. And, and knowing that no one knew each other in person, there was never like group challenges where you had to be together. It was all just go out and do this, find a parking lot and like do a grind on a shopping cart or you know, lots of non skating challenges, too, that you would put together in a video at the end. I wish I knew where my old one was that I was in. Um, I, I, I did it once. Uh, the only footage I found on my computer was from my my friend who had to do when the challenge was to do a trick and eat at the same time. Like whoever did the best trick while eating would get the points. And so here's the clip of that. And so there was all kinds of different stuff that we had to do. I don't remember most of it, but we were the bananas in pajamas was the name of our our team. Um, and. So it was based on old show. If you weren't a kid in the 90s, you might not know, but it was bananas and pajamas. That was that was the, the show. And uh, one of the challenges was to make a song or to play an instrument. And we asked the judges, is your voice an instrument? And they said, yes. So I made a rap based on the intro for the bananas and pajamas cartoon. <laughs> We bananas in pajamas, but we still up in the club. In the VIP, all the fruit show us love. Hanging with some grapes and a pineapple too. Let's get together and make some sweet juice. Back to the crib, and that's when I unpeel. They say my vitamin B is just unreal. That's right, ladies, and I'm right to perfection. Chiquita was right when they made this election. But uh, yeah, so that was fun doing a YouTube specific, you know, king of I don't think you could call it king of YouTube, but, you know, like something like that could be fun, you know, but I don't think YouTubers could compete in king of the road per se. OK. All right. Next question is from Adrian, who <laughs> I promise this is a real question. OK, it's going to sound like I'm making it up, but it is a real question. He says, is there a way to financially compensate you for the knowledge and joy I get from the channel? Are you doing better mentally? Yes. Thanks for all of the time and effort you spend. Really appreciate all of it. You seem like such a great guy. Greetings from Germany. Okay. I didn't make that up. I'm not just trying to plug my stuff, but it was real, a real question. So there are a couple ways you can support the channel. There is the Patreon. You get... Uh, the new I release a new series on there first. Normally, I try to do videos a week in advance there sometimes not to ask rad rat series. I'm usually on a tight turnaround with the with these, but there's stuff on there. Not a ton, to be honest with you. But I've been trying to post some interesting stuff every now and then. Um, I recently posted some really interesting questions I've got for this series that I couldn't possibly answer and just kind of a list that you could uh, peruse through. That was kind of fun. You can join here on YouTube, which gives you access. You get like a little badge uh, next to your name and some graphics that you can post. And um, I do my best to read all of the member comments and um, and reply to those. Um, the other thing is on my website, redredvideo.com, I have T-shirts. You've seen me wear them every day for like six years or every video. So yeah, I've got some different colors I've got on these. These are all screen printed in town. I really wish I'd done like a drop shipping thing um, because I went and I bought all of these and I spent thousands getting all these shirts. I got like five color. Oh yeah, I've got one on <laughs> four colors. Uh, I had five and one is sold out, but I got all these done. I got boxes full of shirts and all these different sizes. Um, and if I had done drop shipping, it would have been a lot simpler. I also have patches, I'm not selling hats, but I'm selling patches on there um, that I put on a hat for experimentation purposes. And, you know, you put on a bag or anything like that. Um, but you mentioned being in, in, in Germany. I'm going to do my best to open up Germany. The shipping, another reason why I wish I had just gone with a service to do this, but I really want to get really nice shirts and try them on first and make sure they were screen printed locally and, you know, cruelty free, like not cruelty free, but, um, I mean, sure. But like, um, you know, how the workers are treated who make the shirts. I was trying to do all that stuff right. 
and it's you know it's just a lot more work um but so like i set up my site to be able to sell stuff and it currently works in the u.s canada and england um it's really complicated with all the tax codes like what code is this thing that i'm shipping depends on what type of textile like is it a textile or is it a garment because it's not a garment if it doesn't contain cotton you know i don't remember all the specifics but there's a lot like really specific things of how you categorize things and i figured it out for those three countries well i don't need it for the u.s i can just send it but i figured it out for those two other countries and i stopped there i'm going to try to open it up to to uh to germany because i do get a lot of emails from germany i'm going to work on that today and hopefully i can figure it out by the time this goes up so that's an option and then the free option of course is to just hit the like button share the video to your your friends uh and that kind of thing you know try to help the channel grow that way so if you really are in a desperate need to help me out, that is how you do it. Last question is from Bones37, who says, uh, if you had unlimited time, money, resources, technology, etc., to make a skateboarding video game, what would your absolute dream game look like? Would it be a more arcade style game like Tony Hawk with goals and crazy special tricks? Or maybe a more realistic game like Session or Skater XL, but with a full storyline following a character's path to becoming pro? Would you use a standard controller? Would you invent some kind of crazy peripheral? The technology, again, the technology doesn't matter, so it can be as crazy as a full body suit that tracks your movements or a top skater machine where the board can freely spin and rotate. Okay, I'm going to give you two answers. Because the first one I don't think is all that fun and interesting. And the second one is more crazy. Okay. First answer, realistically, what I would actually want is a uh, it would basically be like skate where there's a lot of challenges. There's a really loose story. It doesn't really matter that much, but just enough to kind of tie it together and give you a sense of opening up a new area when you progress to a certain level and that type of thing to just make it feel more like a game. Uh, and I really like the. Uh, uh, the types of challenges in there, like the filming challenge where you can do that anywhere you want, or you can take a picture, uh, like, and they've picked out a spot for you and told you try to get from here and slide over there. Like, I really like that kind of stuff, but it would have really sophisticated session like controls. Um, a session is really complicated. It uses every button and you can do all kinds of different stuff, pressure flips in different ways, and you can do an impossible and then you can do all, all kinds of stuff. There are a few things that are missing currently. The game isn't actually released yet, but um, like you can't do a double hard flip. You can do a 360 double hard flip, but not a single double hard flip. Um, you can't do like late flips and spins at the same time it's like a late 360 flip or a late hard flip or something like that you know like a, a few more things i would like to add um and then have like a full skate style game built into it and uh i think that's probably attainable i don't know if session is going to be able to reach that mark yet but if it does well and they make a sequel or something like that like i think that's a realistic attainable type of goal um it's I'm not sure, though, because like Skate was able to reach, you know, financial success and popularity and all that because it wasn't that complicated. You steer with one stick, you do all your tricks with the other. If you don't know what tricks are, you can just kind of do this. You know, if you don't skate at all, you can just kind of do that kind of stuff and do OK in the game. Right. But a game where you, you can fully control every little detail. Um, I don't know if that would be as popular, but that one is maybe possible. But that's the boring answer. I'll give you the, the real answer. I was inspired by your full bodysuit tracking motion idea because uh, something I used to do back in the day um, and sometimes now even is just like air skate. So I'll have like my um, like a, a like a bench. So at the place where I used to work, I would go out uh, during lunch and just explore. It was a big empty building for the most part. I could just go explore all these offices and stuff. And I would find like a, a, a bench and I could jump up and just land on my foot like I'm doing a nose grind and flick my foot like I was doing a flip out and land. Uh, and I would like to figure out a way to turn that into a game where it could actually track the way I'm, I'm moving and make it so that it looks like I'm actually doing a, a trick. So I don't know if this would be like VR. You know, it would be like a you would have to be in VR, but it would be like an augmented uh, an augmented reality type of thing. So if you have like a bench or like a footstool or something like that, you can make it look like it's a, a like an actual ledge and you could jump up and flick and it would calculate 
uh, if you flicked the right way in you know, what direction and all that stuff and do the trick that it thinks that you were trying to do. Um, so you could do like a kickflip front tail. And if you land it, you can spin around 270 out and you could just skate like infinitely at actual places. Um, it would just be in your house, you know, for now. Well, no, infinite technology. So this is a cordless. It's actually not even a, a VR glasses. It's just in my normal glasses. There's like a little camera built in and it, you know, displays it on there. Infinite technology. So I could just be somewhere and I could just, you know, have a skateboard with me or anything like that. Or maybe the spot's not actually skatable. It's in the grass or something like that. And I can just hit this button and I can jump up and I can pretend to do skateboarding tricks. I think that would be a lot of fun. Um, so like my friend, Tony and I, back in the day, we would go to, um, a friend's house and they had like the cool, uh, party house where everyone would go like pool table in the basement and the big TV and all that kind of stuff. There's a full bar down there and we would hang out there all the time with all of our friends. And one thing that we would do sometimes as, uh, when we were like 16 or whatever is we would like skate their stairs. So like stand at, at the bottom, see how high up you can jump and like, okay, I'm going to do like a, a Smith on the fifth stair and jump and try to clear it and like land in the fifth stair. And I'm just in socks and then jump off and 270 out and just like fake skateboard. Um, and that was fun. I feel like there's a way to turn that into a game where it's tracking your actual body. Uh, so it's actually like, sure, you could go skate, but you're going to be better in this game. You could do any trick into any grind. You just have to figure out like, you know, it's a lot more forgiving than a real skateboard. If you scoop this way and flick this way, it's going to do a nollie inward heel flip or a double or a 360 or you know, whatever. And you can fine tune it and get used to it and figure out how to do tricks. So it would not only be like just a fun, it, I, I'm thinking of it more of a, as a toy than a game. Cause to me, a game has to have goals and challenges and all that. And I think that would be hard when it's just the stuff you actually have. You can't really bake in specific challenges unless it's just high scores, but that's kind of boring, right? So it'd just be like a toy that you can play around with, but it's also a good way to work out. Super hot outside, you're inside in the air conditioning, and you can just jump up and play around and do some fake skating. I think that would be fun. So uh, I don't think this one will ever happen. There is a VR game. I can't actually play in VR. I get sick instantly, so I'll never be able to, to play it. But there was a, a game that was kind of like that. And I think you, you must have had to use your hands. or Yeah, because you had to have the controllers, I guess. Um, and you could like, it, it, it was kind of like you were on, on your back pushing the board up in the air, like your character wasn't, but that's how it, how it looked, like it felt, you know? You could like push the board and flick it and it would flip and then you'd catch it. And you could do stuff like that. Again, can't play it. I mean, will never be able to play it, unfortunately. But uh, I don't think the version I'm thinking of is actually going to be possible. And if it is, I don't think anyone's going to spend the time to make it. Uh, but that's cool. I mean, there is a game where your skateboard is a phone and you just do this to show it on the screen. I'll show you that right here if you haven't seen that before. That one's pretty cool. I would have never come up with that idea. But um, like, there's a lot of cool stuff out there. So you, you just never know, I guess. But that's what I came up with, a realistic one. And like if both of these games actually existed, I would probably want the boring answer. But I wanted to give you a more interesting one too, just for the lols. So that's it for now. If you've got any questions or if you were inspired by those t-shirts or that patch, you can go to radratvideo.com and check that stuff out and submit your questions there. But that's it for this time. I will see you later and thanks for hanging out.